Hello and welcome to another Webflow tutorial. My name is Rory, co-founder and Webflow developer at Propeller Digital. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use components, previously called symbols, inside of the CMS in Webflow. So let's jump right into it. I'll shrink myself down here. Two of the most powerful features in Webflow are the CMS, which make it very easy for you or your clients to manage different post types inside of Webflow, and the components, which let us reuse various elements across Webflow and easily update one to update all of them. Now, unfortunately, these two don't play well together. You can't use these symbols or components directly inside of CMS items. What you can do, if I go to my blog post template over here, is we can put them above or below or anywhere on the template. So I could put my, you know, it's pretty common to have a call to action of some sort down at the bottom of every page or every post. But what if I want to put these inside of the CMS post that I'm working on? This is a common use case for wanting to put call to actions in the middle of the text. Now, the quickest way to do this would to be put HTML, the HTML of the component directly into the CMS post. But one, that gets a little messy. The whole reason we're using Webflow is to minimize the amount of code that we're doing. Two, it's tricky for your client to do this, or if you have, you know, on your own website or a client's website, if they have a content manager that's managing the content, they don't necessarily want to be messing around with HTML code. But number three, the biggest one, is that you can't update all of them in one go. You have to go into each one and change the code. Now, that might not be a big problem if you only have a handful of posts, but where I came across this issue was working for a client who has hundreds of blog posts. So we're going to get into a very easy low-code solution. What you're going to start by doing is making a page on your website for your components. I've called mine symbols. And you're just going to drop all the components that you want to use in a CMS post onto this page. The next thing we're going to do is put attributes on them. So I have two here. I have a contact component and I have a contact button. And on each of these, you'll see that I have under the element settings, a custom attribute. So these are basically just ways of tagging or giving a unique identifier or not unique to your components or any element in Webflow. They're commonly used for external solutions like FinSuite attributes is one you might be familiar with. And what you're going to do is you're going to give all of them the same name. I've just settled on symbol. And then each one is going to have unique values. So I have CTA button contact me. And over here on this one, I have contact me. Nice and simple for now. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the GitHub link in this video, and you're going to get a copy of this code. So what this is going to do is it's going to use jQuery, which is a JavaScript library, and anywhere in your page or your post, anywhere you put this code, if it finds this specifier, this identifier, and you can call that whatever you want, that's just what I've chosen, it's going to go to the page where you have your symbols. So you need to put the URL of your page in here. And it's going to find any element that has this attribute. So this is called a key pair. Symbol is the key. And then we have the, or key value pair, sorry. This is the key and this is the value. And it's going to replace this with this. So this might be a bit intimidating if you haven't done any coding before, but I promise it's very easy. And what you're going to do is you're going to copy this for each component that you want to use in the CMS. The last one needs to have this bit of code here at the end. We'll get into what that means at the end of the video. But if you wanted to add in a third one here, for example, you would copy this first one and change the comments here to give them proper names. You would put in a new identifier here. So we might call it contact image. If you had a image with a contact button, I don't know, spitballing names here, 
you put in the URL of the page again where you have all your components and you would name it by going into that custom attribute window that we looked at and giving it a unique value there. So what I'm going to do is delete that. I'm going to copy all of this and you need to put this on any template, any CMS template where you want this to work. So in my case, I want to use these components on my blog posts. So I'm going to click into the settings and I'm going to go down to the bottom here and I'm going to paste in this code. And we also need to have this code in the header. So we'll put that in the GitHub file as well. We'll just pop that off the top. We'll look at what that does afterwards. And I'm going to save. Then over in my blog posts, I'm going to use this on just a random blog post. These are all just randomly generated by Webflow. And you'll see here that I've put in this text where I want to have my contact button and this text where I want to have my section. And you'll notice that this matches up with this and this part here matches up with the custom attribute that we made and just to quickly review that that is over here so i edit the component and i have my custom attribute down here now i'm going to publish this and once that loads we're going to go over to the front end and check this out so we'll go back to the home page here this is just my unstyled tutorial site and we're going to go into the blog post and there we have it. We have our button and we have our contact CTA section. So this is very powerful and will demonstrate a live use case of this. This is one of my clients, Behold Retreats. They do psychedelic plant medicine retreats. So if you want to have a spiritual awakening in Costa Rica on psilocybin magic mushrooms, these are the guys to go to. But anyways, if we go over to the blog and go to one of the posts where I have used this. We can see that we have some call to actions inside of the body of the post. So this is again set up the same way. This is on a component page and I've trained up their content editor on how to add these into the CMS to get these buttons working. So if we decide to change that, if we want to change all of these buttons throughout all the blog posts, all we need to do is update that component and it's going to immediately update it throughout the site. So very powerful, very easy to use, very quick to set up. If you wanted to add more of these, you would just, let's take that out because it's making everything red. You would just add in another one of these. You would update the code. You need to update the code on the templates that you are using this on down here. So if you added in a few more here, you would just add it in down there. You would set up your component by tagging it with the custom attribute, and then you would use the text that you've entered inside here, inside of the blog post. And that's it. Hope you find this useful. If you do anything cool with it, or you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments. For people who want to know what this other code down here is, because we are loading the page in Webflow and then having jQuery look for where this text is and swap it, you will get a flash of this text on the page before it loads in the component. Now, if all your components are going to be below the fold, meaning that they're not going to be visible immediately, you don't need to use that. But if I take this out as an example, if I take out this code up here, and I publish the website, you are probably going to see the text very briefly, very briefly because Webflow is so quick, but let's just, there, you can see that. So the solution to doing that is this code is going to hide all of the body, the whole web page, when the site first loads, because it's up in the header tag. And then what we're doing is when the very last one of these blocks of code executes, we're basically just running a function that's going to shed the body to display. Now, this happens so quick that you wouldn't even notice that the body is being hidden. The only time this might cause you an issue is if you have very, very long blog posts 
the page might be white very briefly while it loads everything in. So experiment with this. If you have long blog posts or any type of CMS content and you're using these further down the page, you probably don't need this. But if you have a short page like this and we want to get this effect where we don't have that flash of content, that is what that code is for. So that's it for this tutorial. Hope it's useful to you and best of luck with Webflow.